You're listening to Simple Health Radio, the podcast about recognizing medical emergencies and promoting wellness. Your host is Dr. Amron, an experienced ER physician who has treated thousands of people just like you. Information on the show is not a substitute for professional medical advice. Always talk to your doctor or go to the nearest emergency room with any questions you may have. Thank you so much for joining us today on Simple Health Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Emron. On today's episode, I have a very special guest. His name is Juan. Juan and I have worked together for many years in a local emergency department, and I want to thank Juan for joining us today. Thank you very much. All right, Juan. So, Juan, you had a case recently of a young high school football player. He was about 18 years old. Yes, sir. All right. Tell us a little bit about that presentation and what you and I encountered at that visit. Okay. So we had this patient, very young guy, 18 years old, came in with a left shoulder pain from a sports injury. He seemed a little uncomfortable and there was a bit of an obvious deformation on the anterior side or on the front side of his shoulder. So we took a couple of x-rays after he was triaged and found out that he had a shoulder dislocation. Okay. Very good. I remember that case very well. I think he was playing football on Friday night here in Texas, which is a very big sport. And I think he had a very bad tackle of some type. And the trainer realized something was wrong when he couldn't lift his arm. And I think that's why he was sent to us. And you're right. We did do an x-ray of the shoulder and it was diagnosed as an anterior dislocation. Yes, sir. Okay. Tell us about a dislocation. What separates a dislocation from a fracture? Well, a fracture is when the bone is broken, whether it's any type of break. So a hairline fracture, a transverse fracture, there's multiple fractures that can happen. Usually those are more common on uh, geriatric patients or older patients who have more brittle bones. But younger people like this gentleman usually have dislocations. They're a lot more healthier. Their bones could take a little bit more damage. And the difference is that the bone doesn't break, but it just either moves one way or the other where it's out of the location or the area it's supposed to be in. Absolutely. And I agree with you on that. I think the force is so fierce that it pushes the humerus, which is the long bone in the upper arm, out of the cavity, which is called a glenoid. That's the round part of the shoulder joint itself. Now, was he in a lot of pain? Yes, yes, he was. Yeah, usually they do have a lot of pain or discomfort with their range of motion, as we call it, where they can't move without having excessive pain. Absolutely. And if I remember right, what we did in this patient was start an IV. We actually drew some basic lab work on him. We gave him a little bit of oxygen too, because oftentimes with dislocation, their blood pressure goes up and down. One, they're upset, and two, their body is responding to the adrenaline and everything else that's going on. So we always do that automatically, even if they don't need surgery. That is a standard protocol. Now, what did we do after the x-ray, once we had the diagnosis? What were the next steps that we had to follow? The next step would be primarily figuring out if it's an anterior or posterior dislocation to see what the next step is going to be as far as reducing it or putting it back into place. After that, we'll certainly push, well, not myself, but medications will be pushed through help the patient with the pain. It'll be placed back into place in a rather, if or, yes, it's forceful way, and then immobilize the shoulder the best you can, usually with a sling and swath and, you know, take it from there, give time, time for them to heal. Absolutely. I agree with everything that you described. What happens with the dislocation is that the ligaments and the muscles actually spasm. And normally, if you just release the spasm, the bone wants to go back where it came from. Just like if you cracked your knuckle, the bones of the knuckle actually want to go back where they came from. But the spasm is so tight, it cannot relax. And the person can't make their muscles relax. It's involuntary. So the first thing that we have to do is relax the patient. And oftentimes we'll have to give anesthesia. And in this case, we had several options because he was a young, healthy male. So there was the option of Versed versus Propofol versus Fentanyl. And I think we had chosen Versed in his case. The benefit with that medicine is that it also causes short-term amnesia. So they don't remember anything about that 10 or 15 minute time frame, which is a good thing because we don't want them to remember that pain. Correct. Absolutely. And then once we administer the anesthesia agent, that's called conscious sedation. The nursing staff will monitor the heart rate and the blood pressure very carefully, and it usually takes two people to reduce Mm -hmm. a dislocated shoulder. So tell us about that. Guide us through what steps need to be taken for reducing. Well, after the patient is sedated, uh, usually it requires a bit of uh, force to actually pull it back into place. Usually they'll forward or away from the shoulder, and it'll place itself back in to the pocket where it belongs. But like Dr. Amron said, usually the muscles 
will start spazzing me after that from the pain or the response of the body. And that's usually where you try to mobilize the shoulder and uh, just let it uh, take its time. Absolutely. And there's about seven or eight different techniques that have been tried. Some are from the military where they just do it out in the field, where someone has a dislocation in the middle of combat and others are trained on how to reduce it even without medication. It's a little bit aggressive, a little bit barbaric, but it works, especially if you do it quickly enough. Others can be done by trainers on the sidelines Mm -hmm. of a football game or a basketball game. So there are some people who are very qualified, even people who are not medical doctors or Mm -hmm. surgeons who are able to do it because they've seen so many dislocations. And then there's others that require traction, which is what we ended up doing In our case, we used two bed sheets. So one bed sheet was applied to one side of the body, the other to the other side of the body, and you and I pulled in opposite directions. So basically, I pulled away on the right side of the body, and then you were applying traction to the arm in a slow fashion. So it's not jerking. It's in a very slow fashion. And the patient did scream a little bit, and then it popped into place. Yes, sir. Did the patient have relief after that? Yes, usually they'll have relief, but still have soreness that will last them for a good while, maybe four weeks, give or take some. Absolutely. And the key that you mentioned already was the sling or the swath. The difference is that a sling is more like where you slide your arm in and Mm -hmm. you can hold it close to the body. A swath is more like where you're tied down, where your arm is really up against your chest, basically. And the whole idea is to prevent from popping out of joint again. Is there a high rate of re-dislocation in younger athletes based on your experience? Yes, yes, there is usually because they are healthier and they could, wait. in other words, be more flexible with their ligaments or tendons. They tend to have uh, re-dislocations. Absolutely. And I agree with that completely. And I've seen several cases where, especially college football, that's the number one sport related with shoulder dislocations. A lot of those athletes actually have to go through orthopedic mm-hmm. surgery basically to tie down those ligaments so that they're not so loose, and that reduces the risk of dislocation in the future. In this case, I believe the patient did well. I don't think he had any complications. We saw him in follow-up a couple of weeks later, and he was back to sports later in the year. But that was a very interesting case because it was a classic presentation, very simple you know, to reduce it once we had the anesthesia on board, but I think that was the right thing to do. Do you have any final thoughts or other topics related to shoulder dislocation? Not that come to mind. We covered all of those. Very good. So what we'll do is update the blog on our website, and we'll have some additional information regarding shoulder dislocations. If you or your family members have any possibility after a fall or a sports injury of shoulder dislocation, go directly to the emergency department. It's not something you'll be able to treat at home. They need to do the x-rays. They need to do some basic blood work, get some anesthesia on board, and reduce it as quickly as possible. And that does prevent complications. I do hope to have you all back on a future episode. I hope you learned a little bit from Juan on this episode regarding shoulder dislocation. And I do hope that you'll share this information with your family and friends. Thank you so much. We hope you enjoyed this week's episode. Visit simplehealthradio.com to read the blog, follow links mentioned on this episode, and easily share content with your family and friends. Subscribe to the show on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and the 3 Now Radio Network. Be sure to connect with Dr. Amron on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and Tumblr to send us your questions and ideas.